is a God who hears prayer all the time. When we call upon him, he does hear our prayers. I welcome you once again to the hour of hope. My brothers and my sisters who have joined us now, the Lord continue to be with you. Uh, I cannot mention everybody's name who have tuned in, but I thank you, my brother Drew Jaye, Alaji Kasali, my Ebu boy, uh, Tunde, you are welcome. As your mom, your brothers and sister, and perhaps your family, greet them to for me. I welcome my the Lord, my Lord, my Father and the Lord, the HOD of Italy, Assistant Venerable Super Evangelist Udubanjo. Thank you for joining in. God bless you as you join in. Once again, I welcome you to the Hour of Hope. Today's ministration will be based on what I call Do Not Ignore the Voice. Do Not Ignore the Voice. Do Not Ignore the Voice. 
but before I start, please let us agree together. Please agree with me while we go into a short prayer. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Holy Saint Michael, my Lord and my God, the hour of hope has come as thou hast commanded us, and I thank you for every day. Last week we call upon you, you answered us to see today. Father, Lord God, this is another day our Lord you have made and we shall continue to rejoice and be glad in it. The little minutes we are going to spend during this hour of hope, I pray Almighty Father that every word that shall proceed from my mouth to the ears and the heart of your children shall be directed by you in the name of Jesus. I will not speak from my own knowledge. I will decrease while you, my Lord Jesus Christ, will increase so that everything we shall hear today shall come from you. And everyone that will be hearing your word, Father, I pray that they shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will open everlasting door for them in the name of Jesus. All their aspirations shall be shall be come shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for everything. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Once again, I welcome you. As I said, the title, the theme of today is Don't Ignore the Voice. And I am going to use the book of 2 King, chapter 5, verses 1 to 14. 2 King, chapter 5, Verses 1 to 14. I welcome you, Prophet Elijah Kitude and Super Evangelist Yinka Shobodu. For thank you for joining us. God bless you and your ministry and household. Second King chapter 5, verses 1 to 14. Is to do with Nama, the story of Nama. Now Naaman, captain of host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because of by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a land maid, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in, Sir in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went on, went in, and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus says the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver. 600 pieces of gold and 10 changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, Naaman, my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so, when Elisha the man of God had heard that the king of Israel had rent his cloth that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou 
rent thy clothes. Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me, and stand, and call on the name of the Lord his God, and strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. And not Abani, and Papa, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel. May I not wash in them and be clean, and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servant came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee, do some great thing, wouldest thou do them? Not? How much rather then, when he said unto thee, Wash and be clean? Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of the little child, and he was clean. Welcome, my brother and the Lord, Super Evangelist Akinyele, Prophet Eri. You are welcome. Thank you for sharing this video. God bless you. Like I said, do not, don't ignore this voice. Don't ignore that voice. Don't ignore that voice. And it's taken from Roma, uh, sorry, Second King chapter 5, verses 1 to 14. Although it was the story of how Naaman was cleansed of his leprosy, but I am using a very, very minute person which you and myself before today, maybe, thank you, Olono Tola Ibidako, for sharing this. God continue to bless you as well. And it's a, the, the, the message, the voice of that maid, a maid, to, for a maid to go to his master and go to him and talk to him. And for the master to listen to the voice of the maid. You can see that God is at work at that time. But there is a lot about it. A lot of us, we are very proud that we don't want to listen to things we are told by someone who is not as much as we are, who are like servant to us. Or maybe I am a church leader and a young, a new, a grown-up baby, a grown-up messenger of God speaks to me spiritually. And I say, oh, what is he saying? I feel too big that he cannot, he cannot even correct me. This message is, comes to you today. If you think you are big and nobody can correct you, if you think you are big, you cannot listen to your subordinate, to those who are working underneath you. I want you to listen to this message which, is, which has come to you. Please do not disconnect. Uh, I don't know what is wrong with this connection, but please do not go away. It will come back by the grace of God. So, don't say you are too big to listen to someone who is not even as intelligent or as highly placed as you are. Whatever position you are, God can you, you find yourself, God can send someone to you. 
and it behoves you to listen and do not ignore whatever message they tell you because there is something in what they are telling you. Here, Naaman was a general. He was a he was the captain in Syria in Syria. But I mean, he was honorable, well known, very popular, very rich. There was one boat in his life. He was a leper. He has leprosy. And there was no physician in the whole of Samar, in the whole of Syria, that could heal him. However, this maid, when someone is a maid, he, she was a servant that was, was like a, a slave that was taken from Samaria. A maid was taken from Samaria. And that maid was with Naaman's wife. And when he saw that Naaman was, was with leprosy, was a leper, even though he was highly placed, he spoke to him. He went and told him, I welcome my sister uh, Sumbo, my brother Awoshika, um, my brother and the Lord Prophet SOJ. Thanks for coming last week. God continue to bless you. Uh, Super Evangelist Prophet uh, Kasumu, you are welcome. Do not ignore the voice. Don't say the message coming to me is giving, being given by someone who is lower in rank than me. I am the pastor. I am the shepherd. I am an evangelist. I've got everything. I am a reverend. I am an apostle. God is telling you today, Naaman, listen, he did not ignore the voice of a maid. If he had ignored it, he would not have been healed. He would not have been cleansed of his leprosy. He would have remained a leper throughout his life. And we all know when a, 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 the maid was a Samarian who was carried from uh, she was carried captive to Syria because they they are not as powerful as Syria in those days. The Israelites could not face Syria. They captured them and they took a lot of them as slaves. And this girl, this maid, was one of them. This lady, this maid, which I'm talking about her today, the the lady that Lord used for the leprosy of Naaman to be cleansed was taken captive. However, before he, she was taken captive, she already knew about Elisha. He did not hesitate to publicize what he knew about Elisha. And he told his master, through his wife, that look, there is someone in Samaria who will cleanse this man of his leprosy. There is someone in Samaria who will cleanse him of his leprosy. The, the lady maid knew what she was saying. She knew what God has done through Elisha. She was a witness of what he had done. Although, although the Bible confirms in the book of Luke chapter 4, I will go to it. Although um, Elisha has never cleansed someone of his leprosy in, in Samaria. So the guy has not seen Elisha healing someone with leprosy. But she believed she would heal him. So, in the book of uh, Luke, chapter 4, it is confirmed, I think, verse 27. Luke, chapter 4, 27, it said, But unto none of them was Elijah sent, save, I will, I will start from 25. But I tell you of a truth, 
Many widows were in Israel in the day of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and the great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elijah sent, save unto Sepharata, a city in Sidon, unto a woman who was a widow. And 27 said, Men, and many lepers were in Israel. Listen, many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, seven Naaman the Syria. So the girl has not seen or heard Elisha cleanse anybody of her leprosy. However, she believed that if this man, my master, could go to uh, Elisha in Samaria, he would cleanse him of his lep leprosy. Despite her condition, despite the fact that she was a maid, she was after the good health of her master. She was after his well-being and welfare. Not you and me who, who will say, ah, they, are, they have taken me as a slave. Whatever happened to them, let it happen to them. I'm not concerned. But this lady, this maid did not say that. He did what? He was, he was looking for the welfare of a master. So in that case, he said, no, this man must be cleansed. Are you after the progress, the good welfare, the well-being of your master? Those of you listening to me, are you a church member who wants your, uh, your, your, your leaders to progress or you want them down? Are you after that they are down for or their progress? Is there a way you can help them or you think that no, uh, 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 well, if, if, he cannot, if he cannot be the, uh, the, 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 the leader, why is he taking it upon himself? You want him to fall. Remember, you yourself, you will become a leader one day. And when you become a leader, there are what they call karma, retribution. What you have done will come upon you as well. So this maid was after the well-being and welfare of her master. A servant became a blessing to a first look. He, he has a first master. It's not by uh, it's not what he wanted to be. She did not bargain to be a slave, but she now accepted her condition. I am now with this man. He is my master. I is my uh, uh, my my, husband, uh, my uh, the wife. I am the maid of his wife. I must look after his well-being as well. So he, she was a blessing to Neymar. Do not ignore the voice. That is the message of today. Do not ignore the voice. If you ignore it, it will not be good for you. Don't say the person talking to you who is advising you is below you, whether in rank or in anything. No. Listen to that voice. Do not ignore it. It is not good if you ignore it. Because by listening to it, by doing it, there is blessing in it. So, this lady was a blessing. This maid was a blessing to Neymar. Are you a blessing to your leader in your organization? Not only in your church, not only anywhere, but in your organization, even your place of work. Are you a blessing? Look, you may be in your work. God wants to use you for your, for your boss there. Has he got any shortcomings you know about? You need, you, you need to make sure that you help him. You need to make sure that you are after his good health. Look, Neymar did not consider his position that he was a general, he was highly placed, 
he was honorable he did not consider his position he had what he made told him so you masters you leaders you evangelists you pastors you teachers you apostles you superior evangelists listen to your members as well do not ignore them there is blessing in this guy there for you Nema did not ignore the voice of his maid. Welcome, uh, my brother Abraham, and uh, my brother Adi Kambi. God bless you. Do not ignore the voice. Do not ignore the voice. That is the message of today. Neymar did not consider his position and he, he did not consider the position of the maid. How oh, a maid asking me to go to uh, Samaria for healing. He did not consider that. Neymar did not look down on the maid. He listened to what the maid had to tell him. In other words, he did not ignore what the maid told him. I am appealing to you, masters. I am appealing to you, you church leaders. I am appealing to you, you reverends. In whatever capacity you find yourself in the house of God, don't ignore. Don't say, oh, this is a good prophet. This is a bad prophet. Ah, this is a, oh, this is a uh, major prophet. This is a minor prophet. Once he or she is a prophet and you know him to be him or her to be a prophet, I know we have fake prophets and prophetesses, but if you can recognize him or her as a good prophet or prophetess, do not say because it's just coming up, it's just a new anointing, or it's not, it has not even been anointed. What is he going to tell me? I have been in the prophetic prophetic line for the past hundred years before. He was his mother, his or her mother was born. Listen to them. Naaman, listen, he did not ignore the voice of the maid. He did not consider that Samaria were their enemies. He still went there because there is healing it was. Samaria and Syria were enemies. And Nema was the general who went to even conquer Samaria. So if there's nobody in, in Syria, how can I now go to Samaria? He did not say that. That Samaria was subject to them. He did not think that the maid was a fool or this, this, she disrespected him. No, he did not think of that. Even though he stood, and then they were sworn enemy. They were enemies. And in fact, it was one of the war that they were able to capture this maid. You can see, they are the good out of bad things. When, she cap when they captured that, uh, that maid, they wanted to use her as what? As made. But it was her God used for them. In another way, God is, when, when, when God does things, we don't know how he does it. With this aspect, he humbled himself. He had the ample power. He did not say he was a general. He did not say he was honorable. He did not say he was a rich man. He humbled himself to the voice of the maid. Are you listening? Are you or are you ignoring the advice, the spiritual advice they are giving you? Neman obliged. Neman obliged to do what the maid told him. The topic is: do not ignore the voice. Do not ignore the voice. However, whoever is giving you that voice, the message, listen to it. 
and see whether there's something out of it. You can take out of it. What happened is, Nima now went to the king, to the Syrian king, for a letter to take to the king in, East, in Samaria. And he took the letter. Uh, he did not say, he did not look. If it was you, if it was me, and I'm in a highly placed position, because I am rich, even though I need their assistance, what do I do? I will send my messengers. I may send my, the best car I have. I can even send aeroplane. Go and bring that prophet here to me. How can I go to that prophet? Naaman ate the humble pie. He went to meet the prophet himself. Men of God. Let us take a cue from this. Men of God. Let us take a cue from this. The position you hold is an honorable one. You are not supposed to be running after the rich men, after the, uh, the people in high places. They are supposed to be running after you because you are an oracle of God. But you have sold your birthright because of money, because of wealth, because of what you are going to eat. You run after them. They are supposed to run after you. The, the men of the world, they are supposed to come to you, men of God, and seek for your assistance. You are not supposed to go to them. I'm not saying you cannot get something from them if they give you. Don't ask for it. But you are not supposed to go and run after them because of their money. You now become servants to them. You be, make yourself to be subservient to them because of money. And you, as a man of God, whatever your age, if you are a man of God, please stay put where you are. Don't run after those people because of their wealth. They will come to you. They are supposed to come to you, but they, because they know you will not. You will not come to them. They know that they, they know that you will come to them because you are so poor, because you are so wretched, and you show them that you are wretched. God bless you, my brother Zano, my super evangelist, and super evangelist. I came today from Leicester Parish, the Shepherd Leicester Parish. God bless you. The topic is don't ignore the voice. So you men of God, God has placed you in a vantage position, but you don't know it. Like my other says, you sold your birthright to the people who are rich. You want to go to them. They are supposed to come to you as a man of God. Naaman went to Elisha. And you will see further in this message. He went to Elisha. He, he humbled himself. You men of God, you are honorable. You are even more honorable than those who are rich because your honor was from is from God, not from man. Your honor is, oh, my dear son, Peter, you are welcome. God bless you for tuning in. You are honored. God honors God has honored you as men and women of God. You are not supposed to go after the men who are rich in the world. They are supposed to come to you because God has placed you in that position. God who we worship is the one who has placed you in that position. Do not ignore that it. That position God has given to you, don't lower it. You are in a place of honor. You are more honorable to God than those people in the world. Naaman was a general. He went to prophet Elisha himself. He did not send anybody. Elisha did not go to him. You will see further what even really happened when he got to Elisha. And when he went there, he did not disguise. When Naaman 
when he went to Elisha, he did not disguise. When he took the letter to the king in Samaria, the king was afraid. How oh, am I God? How can I heal someone? That if I can't do it, then I brought problem to myself. Because this king of Syria are more powerful than me. And if I cannot heal the general, then he will bring war against me again. So the king himself was not happy, was panicking because of what really happened. So he did not want any war. He did not want another war because he has already had war with them. So where, but when Elisha had it, he sent people to the king. He said, send your patients to me. We know that there is a prophet in Israel. Let us see what happened. Now, let us see what happened when Naaman got to Elisha. Naaman came with his retinue, with everything. And can you believe that? Okay, my daughter, my son. Okay. Okay, I hear you. Right. Naaman did, I mean, sorry, Elisha did not go and meet Naaman. Even when Naaman came to the house of Eli uh, Elisha, Elisha did not go to meet him at the door. But if it's you, I mean, ah, a governor coming to me, who am I? I have to go and see the doctor. I, the, 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 I have to go and see uh, the, the governor, whatever I'm doing. But Elisha did not even see him face to face. What did he do? He even in Elisha sent one of his messengers to Elijah and to Naaman. He did not go and see the gift that was brought by Naaman. My brothers and my sisters. He was not running after the wealth or the money or the riches of the, uh, the, of, uh, the, the man who came to him. But you men and women of God nowadays, we men and women of God nowadays, we run after them. They are supposed to run after us. The money they have should be subject to us. We are not supposed to, as men and women of God, we are not supposed to be subject to them. I welcome you, Fash Oguns. Thank you very much. God bless you. So, what I'm saying is, we are not supposed to be subject to the men and women of the world. They are subject to us as men and men of God, and men and women of God. Elisha did not go and see the gift the man has brought. Even if you look at verse 10, Let's see what he did. He said, And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. What he said, go, Just go and wash in Jordan. And that is it. However, because the man saw himself as highly placed, pride now come over, now came over him. And let us see what the Bible tells us about pride. If, if you look at the book of uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 2 says, When pride comes, it brings what? Shame. When pride comes, it comes with shame. And also, in the Proverbs chapter 6, 6, 16, verse 5, he says, It is an abomination to the Lord. To be proud is an abomination to the Lord. He also said in verse 18 of Proverbs chapter 16 that pride goes before destruction. So he became proud because Naaman did not even come to meet him 
outside. He only sent a, mess a messenger to him. He disrespected him. Uh -uh. I am the commander in Syria. I conquered Samaria where you are today. And you are asking your messenger to come and tell me. Ah. Pride, the pride which he had was upon him. Firstly, because Elijah did not Elisha did not come out to meet him a general. Also, uh -uh, even if he didn't come, why did he have to send someone else to me? And there are many rivers in Damascus. Why is he now asking me to go and bath in Jordan, that dirty river? Me, huh, he must obey the voice of the Lord. He must do what? He must obey the voice of the Lord through the man of God. You see, Elisha was even thinking that I am not ready to go there. And the Bible even records that he went away with what he had. Naaman did not go. I can tell you, could be there was other pressing spiritual assignment for him. He did not leave that spiritual assignment for uh, before him to go and attend to someone who is rich. No. He, he himself listened to the voice. So he did not interrupt what he was doing. But you are myself. Let's say a brother is with you. Discussing about his, his or her problem with you. But there's another so a woman who is very rich come again. What will you do? Ah, my brother, can you excuse me a minute? Let me see madam. Because of our riches. Ah, when you get to heaven, if there's any opportunity for you to, 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 to give account, what account are you going to give? You run it, you, be, you made yourself to be a servant of money or riches or wealth or man instead of them coming to you. Elisha did not do that. He had forgotten that he, the, 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 the man, the man had forgotten that he was a leper. And of course, the law of Moses then, one who was a leper, they are not supposed to be in the city. And of course, you know that Elisha knew everything. We know everything about the law of Moses. He will religiously follow it. He will religiously observe it. However, it was in River Jordan that God had appointed for him to be killed. Whatever you like it, whether you like it or not, I have nothing else to say. The voice has already, have already been sent to tell you, go to River Jordan and bath. It was at this point that the maid came again. And let us see what the maid. Ah, that maid was a God sent to them. I pray that we leaders in our churches, we will have someone like this maid that the Lord will send to us to be a blessing to us. That we will not ignore his or our advice. The great maid. Ah, my Hey, father, because well, he became a father because he said he's a servant. Father, in verse 30, he said, And the servant came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do something great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather than when he said unto thee, Wash and be clean? Just ordinary for you to go and be clean. However, there is, like all of us, let's see, Romans chapter 10, 
what does he say? Verse 3. He said, For they be ignorant of God's righteousness and go about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. That is exactly what happened to Nima. He was proud. He, he would not submit to the righteousness of God, which you and myself today, we find ourselves in the same shoe. Please, don't blame Nima. You would have done worse than Nima. You would have been proud than Nima. And of course, also, the Bible tells us in Job chapter 33. I welcome you, my father. I will listen. God bless you. How is the ministry? And your church, the family. God be with you in the name of Jesus. Let's go to the book of Job. Job chapter 20, chapter 33. Sorry. Chapter 33, verse 25. Chapter 23, verse 25. And what does he say? Even he say, he said, his flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the day of his youth. He shall return to the day of his youth. His flesh shall be fresher and he shall become like his youth. So he, 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 he had ignored, he wanted to live, but God sent that servant again to him. You see, that, that servant was free with, with his master, you boss, you governors. You leaders, how, how are your members free with you? My dear sister, Ranti, you are welcome. God bless you. I'll share good. Hello to him. Now, how are you treating your members? You underrate them. Because of what? You underrate your members because of your position. Eh? The lady, the maid, was very, very close and had access and was able to give his master faithful opinion to tell him his shortcoming, to tell him what he has done wrong, even though she was inferior to the master. The maid was a godsend. Masters must be willing to hear the reasons from their servants. That is what the book of Job says. We must listen. Let's, let, me, let me open the book of Job. The book of Job, chapter 31. I will read 13 and 14. Job 13 and 14. What did he say? We need to listen to our servant, to those who are under us, who are not as positioned as we are. We must, we need to listen to them. What does he say? Job 31, 14, 13 and 14. If I did not despise the cause of my mass servant or of my mass servant when they contended with me, what then shall I do when God riseth up and when he visiteth? What shall I answer him? What shall I answer him? So we need to listen. We masters, we leaders, we need to listen to what our subject tells us. We don't know all the things. Do not let us ignore their advice. More so when they are godly advice. Even when they are those who are advising you are below you. Welcome, Rebecca, to today's broadcast. I am discussing do not ignore the voice. Do not ignore the voice. Please, I beg of you, make comments, like, 
And I say I want you to please share this message to people, to other people who are even not my own, uh, my own friends on Facebook or on uh, YouTube. Let us, I welcome you, my father in the Lord, uh, shepherd of uh, Birmingham. God bless you, sir. So, let us understand. Let us listen to our members. They will, they can advise us. Don't let us ignore them. The way the, the maid of Naaman uh, talked to him, to our master was very modest and respectful. Don't don't say it. Uh, don't the way you do say it may even affect the way your master will listen to you. God bless you. Thank you, Ibidako. So, please, my brothers and my sisters, listen. Don't say who is advising you. They are just below you. You masters. You. Listen even to your housemate. Those of us who have housemate, God may send them to you. Don't ignore their advice. Weigh it. There may be sense in what they are saying. Naaman was highly placed. The, the doctor, I mean the servant, was has access to him. He was able to advise his master. At, at the end of the day, he had to... Uh, what do I say? Eat another humble pie. He said, at the end of the day, he listened. Eh? He listened to the servant. He had to humble himself. And what does the Bible tell us? Those who humble themselves. Who humble themselves. What does the Bible say? He humbled himself. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 6 says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. He shows favor to the humble. The same James 4.10 says, Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you up. If Naaman did not humble himself, he would not have been healed. If he did not listen to the message or from his maid, he would not have been healed. The book of Romans, also uh, chapter 12, 3 says, For by grace, that is Paul saying, But by grace, for by grace, giving me, I say to every one of you, Do not think, of yourself more highly than you are. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to, but rather think yourself with sober judgment. That is the voice. Do not ignore the voice. So he told the man now, he now told the ma his master, our master, Please, listen to what the man of God said. So, what happened, according to verse 14 of uh, 2 King chapter 5, after the servant have, I advised him, he now said, Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the sin of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a child, and he was cleansed. So, at the end of the day, he was proud, he humbled himself. He ignored his earthly position. He ignored the, the, his, his riches, that he was rich. He listened to the servant. Do not ignore that voice that is telling you the right thing. Always listen. Don't say, oh, that prophetess or that prophet, what does he know about your church? When did, when did she start giving messages? 
I cannot listen to what he says. Please listen to them. Naaman, as, as highly placed as he was, he did not ignore the voice of his maid. In fact, it was that voice that led to his healing. The Bible records that when he now humbled himself, because he did not want to go to the uh, to the he did not want to go and, and bath in River Jordan. Welcome, uh, Superior Kifala. God bless you. So I I I just can't I just just have to know. Your, your, your pride has nothing to do with God. What you have has nothing to do with God. Humble yourself. Listen to your, even to your servant, to your maid. I know in my country, we have a lot of housemaid. In fact, our children, even the way they, we, they talk to our housemaid is as if they are non-entity. They even forget tomorrow. Listen to them. Naaman, listen to the voice of is made and he got the healing he wanted. It was when he listened to the man of God again, he listened to the voice of the man of God again. He did not ignore that. At the end of the day, he did not want to go. But the man of God has said it. Like I told you, said, you leaders, don't be servants to men and women of the world. They are supposed to come to you. You are not supposed to go to them. Whatever position they, they are, you are men and women of God. If you are really. So, he, Naaman humbled himself. He subjected himself to the will of God. And he went into River Jordan. The Bible records that immediately, after bathing for seven times, he received his healing. The man of God did not say anything. The man of God did not talk anything. Look, many people are, who are who are lepers in Samaria will have, must have gone to River Jordan to bath. They did not receive their healing because it was. If maybe, maybe a lot of people have gone there for healing, they did not receive their healing. But it was in that water, that bad water, that God wanted Naaman to humble him. It was not to humiliate him. Uh, Elisha was not intending to humiliate him, but he wanted to humble him. He wanted his well-being, he wanted him to heal, and he could not, he was not ready to compromise. He could have said, Okay, let me go and get water for him. The spirit directed me to do that. The, the message says, Go inside River Jordan and bath. He went there and received his healing. Let us listen. Let us be obedient to the voice of God. When God speaks to us, let us listen to it. Because we don't know when God is going to do it. When he wants to do it, he will do it. Not by my own power, not by your own power. You just have to listen to do it. No matter who speaks, the way they made Reproach is uh, talk to his master was with humility. He was looking for his welfare. You church members, assist your leaders, advise them. We leaders, let us listen to their advice. Do not let us ignore it. God might have sent them to you. You don't know. Don't let us just ignore it. God has a purpose. God bless you as you listen. All of you who have connected today, God will connect with you in the name of Jesus. Every Monday by the grace of God at 9 p.m. Every Monday, London time. We shall be on here, what we call Hour of Hope. And it's brought to you by Christ Hope Ministries. Broadcast. It's my own personal ministry. God has used, um, given to me to spread the gospel. I am a freelance evangelist. I go to everywhere I am invited to preach the word. I am not restricted by the grace of God. 
God will continue to be with you. I am a full-fledged member of Celestial Church of Christ. My own parish is Elephant and Castle Parish, London. But I go out to do any assignment God has given to me without looking at where or who called me. As long as you want us to speak the word of God and you are ready to hear the truth, we are there. God will continue to bless you. Thank you. I want you, as you responded today, I want you to respond again next week and every Monday, 9 p.m., London time. God will bless you. The Lord will increase you, your family. You will not cry over any members of family. Whatever you are desiring from God, I pray the Almighty Father will give to you in the name of Jesus. If you want increment in your in the spirit, the Lord will endow you with Holy Spirit from above. If you seek wisdom, I pray in the name of Jesus, the wisdom of Solomon, the Lord will give you to oversee your church, your organization in the name of Jesus. If you seek peace of mind, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that surpasses any peace of this world, that Lord will bestow it unto you in the name of Jesus. Everything, I say everything, not a single thing, everything you need, my Lord will provide for you. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This will be the end, but we can still listen to the music in Jesus' name. Thank you for listening again. Thank you very much. God bless you all. I love you. Jesus loves you more than me. I love you. Thank you very much for the response tonight. I thank those who are tuning in for the first time. Those who are tuning in for the first time, please meet us every day. I, I, I welcome you. God will continue to bless you abundantly. It is not me. It is the word of God we want to hear. I we want to know. God will continue. And please, I ask you to always pray for me. I need your prayer. I stand on Jesus Christ, on the rock of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is behind me. There is no fear. I still need your prayer because God has sent me. And I will do it as he has sent me. Please like it. Make comments. And please share it. I pray God will continue to be with you. Thank you very much. Come to Jesus Christ. Samabo God bless Makoko. God bless Bro Bro. This was when we have some good music in Celestial Church. My brother, Aki Kuile, thank you very much for tuning in. Please, you can share it. But we have finished today's ministration.
Uliwa sama sinama May God go with us. In Jesus, thank you. Bye.